Today's episode of The Read Pile is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. I'm Elle, and I'm a little lame when it comes to April Fool's Day. And I am the Space Catman, Rick Space Catman. This is the pile. <laughs> it is the week of April 1st. No kidding! <laughs> and here's some comic book news you can use. A follow-up to the previous comic book news from last week's episode. Oh, oh. Evidently, our friend, my friend, Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> um... He sort of punked us on the internet mm-hmm. by there was a raging debate as to whether or not Deadpool the movie was going to be rated R or not. Um, well, there's video up now uh, today on April first. We apparently are all April Fools because yes, Aww. Deadpool is absolutely going to be rated R. Um, I shared the video on the Read Piles Facebook page, so if you haven't seen it, it came up I think from Comic Book Resources. So credit to them. You watched that little clip. <laughs> <laughs> it was very sexy. I heard him say my name. <laughs> he just said L. He said he said pool. <laughs> Your name isn't pool. No, no, I heard my name. All right. So as I said, um, so far this this movie is theoretically it's three for three. We yeah. saw that we saw that that leaked footage that spawned the movie, right? Yeah. We saw the Deadpool, you know, laying on the bearskin rug in the full costume. And now we see a fourth wall meta breaking moment. Yeah. Can this movie conceivably fail at this point? No, because if he's still part of it, I don't care. He could just walk around. No, it, it could just be Deadpool talking it. to the camera for forty five <laughs> minutes to an hour. They are they are hitting every nail with this character so far. Now, granted, you know we haven't even seen a script yet that I know of. So maybe it's terrible. I don't know. We still have to figure out how the movie's going to work. But I, I think it should just be a series of shots where it's just Deadpool, like, walks into a bar. Deadpool goes food shopping. Yeah. Well, I, okay, to be honest, just gathering everything uh, that he said, even on the side, yeah. just about this character and everything, it, it sounds like, and it, it just, it looks like he's really taking this part to heart. And it just, even... Even if you, you know, just partially like started taking that whole interview seriously, which, right? It was obviously staged. Yeah, yeah. You, you could tell that it was staged. But even if you're looking at it, you could tell that he would, he was ready to come back. And say, no, 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 no. This is Deadpool. No, no, no. This, no, no, no. no. He was very defensive about it, but you could tell that this was serious. <laughs> and, if, if, if I may, <laughs> if I may, is it ironic or just fantastic that the the most serious a character actor could be is to play Deadpool. I, <laughs> I think he's a perfect choice for it he because really he just dove into it. He's he's absolutely taking it seriously. He's like, no, if you're gonna be this character, you're gonna be this character. <laughs> I, you know, you're just gonna go all all out. You just the term hmm, you're looking for it's, here. It's Elle. all or nothing. It's well, the term <laughs> you're looking for is all in. He all, is all in. He is all in. He, now, he, I, I, I know, I know. I, I put that on the tee for you. Look, at you, do you need a moment? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, little bit extra news, a little bit in skosh. Today officially marks the beginning of Convergence. Okay. The two-month um, sort of DC throwing a whole bunch of stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks kind of thing while they move from, from New York to L.A., um, we're seeing a lot of our books paused uh, as, you know, production has to... It's a real-life thing. That's sort of getting in the middle of our fun frivility. Um, so, Secret Six number three isn't going to be out until like June. Well, Issue one was, debuted in November. I know there was already this one gap, and I'll be honest, I made the joke not realizing what the actual time frame was <laughs> at the time, and then went back and I was like. There really was. There really was a gap there. I, I was kind of joking because I, I, I felt like it was a long time, but for real, it was 
it's it, long time and and, and for no us, time well, for us it's really to disappointing issue issue. we love Gale and Gale yeah. Gale Simone is writing Secret Six and we love the Secret Six characters Strix Catman Catman is honestly because of Villains United which happened about seven eight years ago mm -hmm. one of my favorite characters and it's because Gale wrote him then yeah it's disappointing it, it is something that bears. A little bit of, of recognition in our in our nerd world, though, that sometimes books get delayed. It's disappointing, though, because I feel like the longer we have to wait for this book, the less likely it's going to have any longevity. Now, you know, Gail has a lot of other projects she's working on. We're getting Sword of Soros coming out. That's going to be really cool. It's just disappointing. But it is important to remember that Convergence is now, and sometimes books get delayed. Don't freak out when you go to your local comic shop and they don't have an issue that you're looking for. It's going to be a couple of months. That is that is news they could use. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to review books now? I do. Time for some comic book reviews. Starting with Harley Quinn. It is issue number 16. I'm still in love. <laughs> it's quirky. It's great. And right now, what's going on, and it already started in the last issue, so not a big surprise, but she is working towards finding villain Harleys. She needs a gang of Harleys to help her out with everything that's going on in her life. Last review, we already talked about, she's trying to figure out her love life versus roller derby and trying to continue doing her normal Harley stuff and taking care of this building that she's in charge of now and so on and so forth, all these different things. But she needs help. One Harley cannot do it all. She has decided she needs more. So she's taking on much more responsibility to somehow lessen her responsibility. But you know, it's that's how Harley does things. And it's fantastic. And I think the best part of this issue is going through the interview process. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think the next issue is gonna be even better than this one because on this one we're just setting things up. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. I love it. And I'm always going to love it. I can't imagine this is ever going to be going downhill. Moving on. Lady Killer. We are on issue four. I'll be honest, it feels like we're maybe a little further in, but for good reasons. I feel like we're actually, we're picking up speed, we're getting going. You know, we're already, you know, into the whole thing and we know about her a little bit of, well not everything about her history but enough to really understand her side of things what is it what's going on why is she wanting out i feel like there might be more behind it i don't know maybe i'm looking into it too much i don't know but even if you just look at it as a very simple story and not really oh there's gotta be more to it it's still a really good story just in more even a simplified manner. Still fantastic. And basically now she's having to take on help to figure things out. And it seems like the ones that she once could trust, she can no longer trust. And it seems a little bit like things are starting to get a little nutty. And you're starting to wonder, is she going to be able to still hold it together like she was holding it together? I would say in the first two issues, because the third one we were already starting to get a little little nuts. And I, I really want to know what's going to happen. I think it's going to be a fun story. And, speaking of story... So, okay, I know I'm behind the times, but I saw this ad! Here, I'm going to turn it back so you can't see this page. Uh, Munchkin, Adventure Time! Oh my god! Okay, this is like the first ad in a really long time I was just drawn to. And the fact that it says two makes me really depressed because, I'll be honest, I didn't even know there was already a deck out there of Munchkin Adventure Time. And I feel like a complete loser. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess that could have been part of the news, but whatever. I'm sorry. That was a nerd moment. 
got lost it. <laughs> and we are going to go ahead and move along to pick of the week. And we all know it's going to be Wonder Woman. Oh, Wonder Woman. I'm still loving you. Even though you're just, you're new people, and I know, yes, it's been a few issues already, but still, you know, I, it's hard for me to just switch. I fall in love. I get used to things. I don't like change a lot. <laughs> <coughs> but it's true. I don't know. I, I get attached sometimes, and it's <coughs> really hard. But I'm really digging this. I'm digging the story, and... I'm sorry, but the continuation with Donna Troy, it's so badass. It's just, ugh. Ugh. I love it. But poor Wonder Woman. She's just, ugh. She's already trying to figure everything out. And I know I'm repeating myself from some of the reviews. She's God of War. She's Queen. She's, you know, dating Superman. Eh. She's part of Justice League. She's got all this stuff going on. All these people she's trying to protect and be with and just uh trying to be Wonder Woman and there's always somebody there trying to test her and uh, this might be a little bit it's not really a spoiler I'm gonna say it she basically she's facing someone and she's saying hey this is the last time I'm going to have to prove myself a little depressing because I don't think she should have to prove herself anymore this is ridiculous but she said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I will do this, and this will be the last time. And you want to know what she's going to do? Well, maybe you should read the issue. In the meantime, we're going to move on and see what Rick has to say. All right. Well, there wasn't a lot of foolishness in those reviews, L. Yeah. Got to keep the theme going. It's an overarching theme. Remember when I was eating all the pizza? So we got a fool gym. Well, whatever. You're lame. <sighs> Alright, so four books on the read pile. Let's get to it. Okay, let's start it first. Ah, Batman and Robin Annual. This is the third annual from the New 52 Batman and Robin, which is now done. Um, annuals can be very good. Um, they can also be kind of meh. And then they can also just be sort of additions to the story. This falls in that third one. Um, well, that's not fair, because it was still good. It just, it's not anywhere near as good as the last couple of issues of the story, and, and honestly, how could it be? It's an annual, it's not part of anything in particular. But it's still Tomasi, um, there's a different artist, uh, not, not the usual artist, it's fine. Um, it's a cool story of Batman and Robin, like, doing their Batman and Robinist things. There's a lot of father-son interaction. Um, if I'm honest, I thought it was a little weird that Batman referred to Robin as boy a couple of times. But I, I get why he does that. I understand. It's not out of character. It just felt a little off. Um, they do still reference that Robin just lost his powers and that he just came back. So, I would say if you're already getting Batman and Robin, there's no reason to miss the annual. Um, I've read annuals where I've thrown them off my stack and did not get them. And this is definitely not one of those. It was, it was certainly a good read. Um, and if you're already picking up everything else, you might as well get this, since I guess this will be the last last Tomasi Batman and Robin book for now. Next up, something new on the read pile, we have UFOlogy. Ooh. Boom Studios is kind of all over my read pile, and, and really, they're doing great stuff. Um, you should definitely check out whatever you can for Boom. They're, they're a real fun little company. Um, this is by, um, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, so I'm just going to try it out here, uh, James uh, Tinian the Fourth, Tyrion, Tin, no, Tinian, Tinian, T-Y. Tinian the Fourth. Sorry, James. I, I'm not good with last names. You can ask Elle. I only pronounce her first name because that's all I can pronounce. And it's really just like the first letter. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. I sort of picked it up just off the stack because I, I saw that it was from Boom and I th saw that it was James the Fourth. And I like his stuff. He's a Batman person. He's a friend of Scott Snyder. He's a friend of ours. So I figured I'd give it a whirl. Just sort of like, yeah, what could go wrong? It's actually really good. I'm going to read a quote. I tweeted this. But it bears repeating. The impossible's only impossible until someone sees it ain't. That's awesome. That's part of the opening page of this book, and that's how you really start a new book, as far as I'm concerned. You give the readers something really interesting to sink their teeth into, and that was a lot of fun. Next up, 
we have a book that in two issues has given us roughly a trade paperback complete, and that is The Dying and the Dead. This is issue two. Um, you remember I was really excited about issue one because it was a $4.50 book, a 50 cent book, but it was roughly like 50 pages long. And this is three fifty dollars for this book, and it is, I don't know, do they have page numbers on it? They don't have page numbers. It's another like 25, 30 pages. It's awesome. Jonathan Hickman is writing, he's in a writing renaissance. Like, okay, are you reading Scott Snyder? Read everything Scott Snyder writes. Are you reading John Hickman? Read everything John Hickman's writing. Uh, I, there are so few guys that I can point to and be like, everything they do is a hit. But Hickman's one of them. You have to check this out. It's his own little universe. It's his own little world. And my favorite thing about all the Hickman books is essentially this. Whatever's going on in the story, whatever it may or may not be, Hickman's not going to hold your hand and walk you through the story. He's going to send you on your way and just hope you follow through. And if you don't, he really doesn't care. Um, I tell people who are interested in checking out Hickman books, it's like taking, uh, going to Universal Studios here in Orlando and going on the Hulk ride. Because when you go on the Hulk ride, it's a roller coaster. But unlike your traditional roller coaster, it's like tick, 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 tick. And then you get to this top and then you fall straight down. The Hulk, they shoot you out of this tube and you just start flying as fast as you can. That's a Hickman book. He's just going to start running with you. And if you can't keep up with him, that's your fault. Now, those were all very good books and I very much enjoyed them. But they did not get the graphic to spin up. So let's spin up the graphic because it's pick of the week time. It's Jimmy Palmiotti and Matt Brady's The Big Con Job Number 2! I love this book. It's a four issue miniseries. It is a love note to people like myself, like the Angry Nerd Girl, like Jimmy and Amanda, and I'm sure a lot of other people in the industry who have gone to cons many, many times. They have seen the convention circuit become less about getting autographs of your favorite people and more about debuting TV shows. They've seen it all. And this is a love note to you. Also, and I, I tweeted out the images earlier, um, but there is a guy wearing a t-shirt in this book. It is a Batman logo that has the Superman shield, so it's like the Batman Superman logo, but it's got the X-Men X over it and the Deadpool eyes within it. I don't know how many references you need because the guy's also carrying a cat bug-like carrier. If that isn't enough to get you to at least want to check this out, maybe you live in the Orlando area, there's a Megacon reference in this issue. They even say Megacon. How cool is that? It is, it, is, it is very much a love note to fans who have been in the comic book world for a long time, as far as I'm concerned. I can't say that's exactly where uh, Palmiotti and Brady are going with this, but it sure feels like it to me. And it's only issue two of four. It's going to be a really cool four-issue mini. The first issue was heartbreaking in one scene and very fun. This was just fun, straightforward, and it is absolutely my pick of the week. For you, our loyal followers of The Read Pile, we have an awesome offer from Audible.com. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their awesome service. You can download some really great books like The Hobbit, the unabridged version from Tolkien. You can download Divergent, Lean In, lots of great stuff to check out. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia for your free audiobook. That's this week for the read pile. And it's important oh. to note that next week is the end of the read pile. It's all over. We're starting all new 52 continuity of the read pile. It'll be read pile 2.0. Uh, it'll be it'll be the all new read pile. We already launched the logo. That's I'm on our. Leaving. You know what's funny is that was the next line out of my mouth too. Is we're getting ready. Yet. This. Well, this joke backfired. Mm. Where to kill my jokes? No, hey, it's no, Buster. I'm really leaving. Bye. That's funny. I have my new... Ah, come here. I have my new cohort. There you go, buddy. Look into the camera. Say meow. Meow. Al, come get your cat! Al! What do you do? What do you do? What do you do?
doing? 